So we've talked about the idea of having uh, a random sample, the idea being that we, we select people uh, for our study randomly from the population. And the main point of that is to help ensure or at least increase the likelihood that the sample is representative of the population, meaning it has the same characteristics as the population. But random taking a random sample doesn't guarantee that the sample is representative and there are some cases in which uh which it's it's actually a pretty good chance that if we just uh, take a simple random sample like we've talked about so far uh, we probably won't end up uh with a sample that is representative of the population so let me give you an example where that can be the case let's say that we're going back to uh to the idea of i've i've changed something in my class and so here's this box will represent uh, all the students in my class, or, or maybe it's several of my classes. Let's say it's all, a bunch of classes and we have a, a thousand students total. Uh, maybe there is some group within this where there are not very many people with a particular characteristic. So for example, let's say that out of the total uh, population or of, of all these classes, there, there's, a, there's a small sliver of people down here small sliver of people who uh, have visual visual impairments and maybe that is important in some way because maybe the change that I've made to the class uh, it, it has to do with the way I'm visually presenting things to the class and so people with visual impairments may like it more or may like it less than other people in the class and that is is very important to capture in my study Another example is we might have, let's say, and let's I'll put a number on this. Let's say that there are ten people with visual impairments out of out of a thousand people total, and let's say that um, that another slice of the class, let's say these folks here, uh, let's say there's twenty of these people, and let's say that they are non-native speakers. So they can speak English, but maybe they don't speak or understand it as well, or maybe you know maybe they have some more issues with that. Uh, so that might matter because maybe uh, maybe they find it easier to process visual information uh, than than to hear it spoken. Uh, who knows? Who knows what the how this will come into play with the changes I've made in the class? But the point is that, um, and let me let me just label this to be clear that the the rest of this would just be this would just be everybody else in the class. So maybe these are the characteristics that I've identified as uh, potentially important, and I want to make sure I want to make sure that when I take my sample, I capture these groups. Well, you can you can imagine that that if I'm just grabbing people out of here, students out of this class at random, I'm just taking a simple random sample, that the chances are uh, not too great that I'm going to get uh, uh, these folks at the bottom. So maybe I happen to grab a non-native speaker, maybe I don't grab anybody who has visual impairments, or even if I get one person, maybe I, maybe I get a couple non-native speakers from my random selection and I get one person with a visual impairment. Uh, can I really make a conclusion about how well my approach to teaching is working for people with visual impairments if I've only grabbed one person from that subgroup? Probably not. So I might completely, if I'm just using simple random uh, sampling, uh, one of the problems is that I might completely miss an important subgroup. And I that might be an, a subgroup I really want to understand. Um, so, uh, and, and even if I get someone from that subgroup, there might not be enough people. So the way that we, one way of, of approaching that, one way of solving that is to do what's called, instead of just doing uh, random sampling, uh, simple random sampling, we do stratified. We, may, we take a stratified random sample. And the term stratified, it comes from, from the idea that these look, if you, if you studied any geology, uh, there are layers of rock are called strata. And the idea is that, that these, these different layers, each of these, these look like the layers of rock, these look like strata. I think it's kind of a goofy name, but that's the name that we're stuck with. But the name is not important. What's important is what is going on here and the idea here is is there's two steps to taking a stratified random sample basically 
And the first one is that you're, let's see, I'll, I'll say you're going to look for, look for or identify uh, important, important subgroups, important characteristics uh, of, of subgroups within the population, uh, important meaning that they're, they're likely to matter in your study. So we think because we're, we're, we're changing something about the way that we're teaching in the class, we think that it, there's a good chance that it, it may interact with, uh, with whether someone is a native speaker or not, and it may interact with whether they have visual impairments. So those seem like important uh, characteristics. We want to make sure that we get subgroups uh, in our study that have those characteristics. So the first step is to look for important subgroups. The second step is to hopefully you can see where this is going, is to select. We're still going to select randomly, right? It is still a random selection, but we're going to select randomly uh, from, from within, from within each subgroup. So we make a list of all the students in the class, and then we make a list of the students who have these important characteristics, who have visual impairments or have, uh, or are, are non-native speakers, and then we, pick some people randomly from within each uh, of these strata. So we pick some people uh, from, from within this one, right? We randomly select people from there. We randomly select people from here and we randomly select people from here. Now, when we do this, there are two different possibilities. One is that we select uh, strata of equal sizes. The subgroups, we, we make sure that there are the same number of people. So we might grab 10 people from here and 10 people from here and 10 people from here. The reason to do that is because then we make sure that we have enough of each group. So we're getting enough people with visual, we're just going, we're just going to study everyone who has visual impairments in this case because uh, it's such a small number. Uh, the other possibility is so we can do equal sizes or we can do we can do what's called a proportionate proportionate stratified random sample and that's where we would say uh, you know this is let's see this is out of a thousand people so a thousand minus 30 is going to be this is going to be 970 people in here then we have 20 people here and 10 people here so when we take this sample we might uh, do something like we might get uh, 97 people out of just make sure that we've randomly sampled 97 of the general group and then we might get uh, we might get two of the non-native speakers and we might get one uh, of the people with visual impairments the idea there is that the sample has the same proportions of each subgroup as the population i'm studying now, in this case, that would probably not be a great idea because uh, then I don't get, get enough of these, of these folks, right? These are very small numbers. Uh, so depending on the case, you have to consider uh, whether, you know, what size should you select from each group and how do you want to handle that? But, but the, that's not the main point. The main idea is that stratified uh, random sampling uh, ensures that you're getting at least somebody, you, you know, you still have the advantage of things being random, but, uh, but you are ensuring that you're at least getting somebody from uh, within each group.